Okay, so if I take two charges, let's say I have a positive and a negative, right? If I take these two charges and I put them some distance apart from each other, then there's going to be a force between them, right? And so if it's a positive and a negative, we know that they're going to attract, right? And if it was a positive and a positive, we know they're going to repel, right? That's easy. What we want to figure out is how much force do they attract or repel each other with? And to do that, we're going to need Coulomb's Law. So Coulomb's Law looks like this. Okay, there's Coulomb's Law. What these things mean, let's go through all this stuff in this equation, right? So technically there should be two, this absolute value sign. So K is called Coulomb's constant, right? And Coulomb's constant is 9 times 10 to the 9th, about 9 times 10 to the 9th, right? And sometimes you might see K also written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, where epsilon naught, that little number right there, is called the permittivity of free space. Okay, you'll see this on your formula sheet. K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, or it's 1, I'm um, sorry, 9 times 10 to the 9th, right? It's just a constant. Okay, Q represents charge, right? So that's the charges, and it's measured in coulombs. Coulombs, just like Coulomb's law, right? That's the unit, it's capital C. Sometimes you might see this written as uh, a different prefix because a coulomb is a lot of charge, right? Like we're talking lightning bolts have maybe a coulomb or two of charge in them. So sometimes what you'll see is uh, micro coulombs, right? The little Greek symbol mu represents micro coulombs. So one micro coulomb is equal to one times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs, right? So you'll see that more often because we want to put numbers uh, in values that we can use. So this is Q1 and this is Q2. And this absolute value is here to tell us that we don't need the positive or the negative in this equation, right? The positive and the negative are just there to tell us whether they will attract or whether they will repel. We're not going to actually plug in the positive or the negative sign here, right? And R is the separation. So how far apart they are. And separation, right, the base unit is going to be in meters, right? So this distance right here, that's R. It's not a radius. R is separation, okay? So that's the equation. It's pretty straightforward. It's I have these two charges, the magnitude of the charge, right, which is Q. How far apart they are is R. K is a constant, right? You multiply it together, and that'll tell you the force. So the thing about this force is it doesn't matter the value of the charges, this is a mutual force between the two. So this here, if these two things are attracting, the force that two applies on one has to be the same as the force that one applies on two, right? So we've talked about this last year. Newton's third law, forces come in pairs, right? So if we're talking about the force between these two things, bringing them together, that force has to be the same, no matter if this one is 500 coulombs and this is like one micro coulomb. It doesn't matter. It's the same force pulling them together. Okay, so let's solve an example problem. I want to find the force on this minus three micro coulomb charge, right? So I've got these other two charges and I know their distances. I just want to know how much these two things, uh, what force they apply on that charge, okay? So there's three steps. The first step you want to do is to draw your force vectors, right? So I'm only looking at the minus three, so I want to decide, okay, what does this one do to that charge? And then what does this one do to that charge? So that's a positive charge, right? So it's going to attract it. So this is the force of the plus one charge, right? Over here, that's also a positive. That's negative. That's positive. So they're also going to attract. And I'm going to draw this one a little bit smaller because it's further away. And I know distance makes more of an effect because distance is squared in that equation, right? So I've drawn my vectors, okay? Next step. I'm going to apply Coulomb's law to each of these and solve them. So I'm going to solve for the plus two first, right? The one that's further away. So this is the force on the plus two charge. So force is K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared. So when I plug in the numbers, K is nine times 10 to the ninth. Q1, doesn't matter which one you pick for one or two, right? There's two of them. So I'm going to go this one first. So that's two times 10 to the minus sixth. And then this one is 3 
times 10 to the minus 6. So notice I did to the minus 6 because that's micro coulombs, right? I got to convert to coulombs. And then I didn't use the negative sign because the negative is just there to tell me that these two forces or charges will attract. Divided by how far apart they are. That's 0.04, that's 0.03. The total distance is going to be 0.07 meters squared. And when I do this, I get 11.02 newtons, right? That's the force from the plus 2 charge. So now let's go do the force from the 0.1 charge. Okay, so when I do that, 9 times 10 to the 9th, 1, 3, both times 10 to the minus 6 to convert to coulombs, right? And the distance is 0.04, so I get 16.88 newtons, right? So now I have these two individual forces. So third step, because these are forces, I need to add the vectors, right? So this is easy, they're in a line, I'm just going to draw them out. So this one, the force from the plus 2 charge is 11.02 newtons, right? And then the force from the plus one, that was the plus two, the plus one charge, right, is going to be uh, 16.88. So it's going to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to draw it like that. So that's 11.2, and that's 16.88. Then the resultant, or the sum, the vector sum of these two, is going to be from head to tail, right? If I do that, it comes out to be 27.9 newtons. So that's the net force acting on this minus 3 microcoulomb charge. Okay, so one more example. We're going to do the same thing. I want to find the force on the minus 3 microcoulomb charge, and we're not going to walk all the way through this one because it's the same steps. But now it's not in a line, right? So I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to draw my force vectors first. So this plus 1 charge is going to attract that one. So that's the force of the plus 1. This plus 2 is going to also attract it, but now it's going to be pointing this way. So this is the force of the plus 2 charge, right? So I could go do second step, right? Apply Coulomb's law. I could solve for this force, right? Q, Q, R. I could solve for this force. Q, Q, R, right? Use those, get two values. But now when I go add these two up, they're making, they're at angles to each other, right? So the force of the plus 2 charge goes this way, and the force of the plus 1 charge goes up. So when I do this, I'm going to have to draw them head to tail, right? So this is the force of the plus 1. And my answer, my sum, when I add the vectors, is going to look like this. It's going to be, right, Pythagorean theorem? It's going to be the square root of the force of the plus 2 squared plus the force of the plus 1 squared, the square root of that whole thing, right, because of Pythagorean theorem. So you could do that. But solving Coulomb's Law problems are really easy as long as you follow that process. Start by drawing your vectors, then you take each individual vector, find the distance, do Coulomb's Law to it, and then it's just a vector addition problem.